okay, so now let's go ahead and bounce back into this case study. We have a uh, uh, young 22-year-old uh, uh, male who's immunocompetent, now in septic shock uh, with heart failure. Um, he's on the ventilator. Um, our respiratory therapist identified him as being six foot two inches tall, and his actual body weight's 88 kilograms. Um, he was intubated with a number eight oral endotracheal tube um, prior to being placed on mechanical ventilation after the intubation. Um, they performed a sustained lung recruitment maneuver with 40 centimeters of water pressure for 40 seconds, um, and then went ahead and put him on. Uh, their motive, the mode of their choice at the time was uh, pressure-regulated volume control. He's on 100% oxygen, a rate of 16. Tidal volume was set at 495 milliliters and PEEP of 12 centimeters of water pressure. And his airway plateau pressure during passive ventilation was 25 centimeters of water pressure. So the question I ask of you now, based on information that you know and what we've seen through some of our basic literature review, was are these vent settings lung protective? Well, the patient's predicted body weight based on the ARSNET calculation is 82.2 kilograms. So we're not using actual body weight actually to set tidal volume, so don't be fooled by that. We're gonna actually calculate the patient's predicted body weight, and then we're gonna look at the tidal volume. So at six mils per kilogram at 82.2 kilograms, our tidal volume should have been set at, at about 495 milliliters. So our respiratory therapist who were working night shift did an outstanding job with early goal-directed therapy at initiation of mechanical ventilation. And again, by, uh, during um, uh, passive ventilation, um, our airway plateau pressure is less than 30. So at this point, we're seeing evidence um, based on best evidence that we're um, using a lung protective ventilation strategy um, that may help to improve his outcome. Uh, they drew a blood gas about an hour later, and it came back with a pH of 7.30, 45, a PaO2 of 438, uh, bicarb of 20 over negative 5 for a base deficit. So we see a significant rise in the patient's PF ratio. So that tells us that uh, he did respond to the open lung ventilation strategy with lung recruitment, and uh, the 12 of PEEP looks like it's fairly reasonable at this point. One thing I'd like to point out on the x-ray is that, yeah, we do have bilateral infiltrates and the air bronchograms, no surprise because he has ARDS, but the positioning of the, uh, the distal end of the endotracheal tube, it appears to be at the uh, upper to mid-level of the manubrium, which seems to be a bit high in relationship to where the uh, carina is at about the fifth rib. So at this point, it's very important that we actually do um, examine the patient's x-rays, and then advance the endotracheal tube into a more appropriate position um, so that we don't have any inadvertent line displacements.